the Ho River in winter, Washington's Olympic Peninsula. The rivers on this isolated coastal rainforest are popular this time of year. They're pretty. They also have big, wild steelhead. This is Gray Struznik. Gray's a fly fishing guide. In fact, he's the only fly fishing guide of his generation who was born and raised around here. People know him. Oh, I know Gray Struznik. He's a fishing guide. I do know Gray a little bit. I've heard of him. I met him in the bar in Forks. He's probably the fishiest guy I've, I've ever met for sure. Everyone calls him Sasquatch. Yeah, he's a very nice guy. He comes in here all the time and he's very polite. He can really work a spay rod. Forks is a timber town. They got trees. Not as many as they used to have and not as big as they used to be, but still, lots of trees. In the 1970s, Forks was known as the logging capital of the world. Since then, the industry has declined. That's what this community was built on, is the logging capital of the world, so. It was the, the logging capital of the world. It's changed like a son of a gun over the years. 40 years ago, you wanted to be a logger. Now it's like, there's not many people working in the woods anymore. When Gray was young, most of the kids figured they'd grow up to be loggers. Gray didn't know what he was gonna be when he grew up. He was uh, busy doing other stuff. Yeah, he was running amok for a while, yeah. He had a motorcycle, uh, a couple of them. Especially as a teenager. Trooper Nelson went by and saw him, chased him through the woods. It seemed like he, he had a lot of energy and... Got to the end of the trail and Trooper Nelson was sitting there in his car and didn't always channel it into positive things, sometimes negative things. And so he didn't get away with it. It wasn't quite in line with what the law would see, so I had to bring him back into check occasionally. After yet another run-in with Trooper Nelson, Gray knew he should probably make a change. He didn't know what to do with his teenage self, so he did what any of us would do. He went fishing. A lot. He fished for all kinds of fish in all kinds of ways, but Gray absolutely fell in love with swinging flies for steelhead. By the time Gray grew up, there weren't many logging jobs left, so he found work guiding. Over the past decade, Gray and other guides on the peninsula started using different tactics to catch steelhead on fly rods. They got really good at it. Their clients caught lots of fish. Some days, so many that they lost count. The OP turned into a mecca for steelhead fishermen. Gray's guide business blossomed. At night, all his buddies would come to his house, drink beer, and be merry. But one day, Gray did something dangerous. Math. The Ho River has an escapement target of 2,000 fish, with 20 guides working at most days during a 90-day season, and each guide averaging three fish per day, then, let's see, carry the two, wait. They're catching more fish than there are in the river. That can be good. In case you haven't been paying attention, here's a quick recap on the state of the OP fisheries. They're in decline. The hoe's been in decline since 1980. It's not sustainable. Wheats has been in decline since 1980. It seems to me that our escapement numbers are way underperforming. The quill ute's been in decline since the mid 90s. So for instance, today I floated 13 miles. I saw five fish. And I think the hoe population since 1980 has declined by 33%. Gray knew OP Steelhead were in trouble, but he'd always assumed fly fishermen were off the hook, that he and his buddies were the good guys. Now he wasn't sure. Since all the Puget Sound rivers closed down in 2009, and knowing how effective nymphing can be, I've watched the amount of pressure just blow up. So we're catching every third fish twice, at least. He wanted to keep his livelihood, and he wanted to keep fishing but he didn't want to damage the fishery he loved. What was he gonna do? Naturally, he grabbed a spay rod and went fishing. That's where he found his answer. So if one fish on the swing can be a life-changing experience, why don't I just swing flies? The swing is the solution. To reduce his impact but continue doing exactly what he loves, Gray and his clients will only swing flies. They'll slow themselves down, stand in the river, watch fog in the trees, learn the currents. They won't catch as many fish, and that's a big risk to Gray's business in a culture that idolizes hero shots. Oh, I don't think it's a terrible idea at all. I think it's maybe one of the best decisions Gray has ever made. I really admire it because I know he loves to do that, but I but I also understand he's trying to reduce his impact. 
One man's decision in and of itself, as we all know, will not change OP Steelhead, but Gray is a young man who's a leader amongst this community. When you slow down, you get to experience these rivers in a completely different way. So here he is at a young age, willing to make a choice like that. Yeah, uh, it's a big deal. It is a big deal, and it isn't easy. Optimism is difficult. Steelheaders are optimists. Gray and his tribe swing flies for Olympic Peninsula Steelhead. Every snap and step is full of hope. This is the slowdown.